sometimes we run into some trouble while trying to import data. We're going to go through um, a few of the more common problems and how to solve them. In the data folder that you imported from the data skills package, there's a file called mess. Now, let's import that. We'll create an object called mess and import the data with read CSV. Look in the data folder mess.csv. Okay. Every time you see an error message in red like this, it's going to be a bit scary at first, but what I want you to do is to read it. Now it says parse with column specifications. The columns, so the first column is called this is my messy data set and it's a character column. And now there's 27 parsing failures. A ton of things have happened. We can look at all of those problems but maybe first let's look at the data set itself. So mess.csv, let's have a look at it. Ugh. So it's got a first line that's not even part of the data. This is my messy data set, skips a line, and then there's the um, column headers, and then it skips a bunch of lines for each thing. All right, seems to have a first column that's entirely junk, but we need to skip the first two rows before we can um, see the data. Now, fortunately, read CSV has an easy argument for this. It's called skip. And we just tell it, skip two rows. Now let's, excellent. We've got a data set called mess. Um, it's still a little messy. We have this junk column we don't need. Order, we've got a missing value here, a few NA values around here. Um, our dates are in a bit of a funny format, but let's have a look at this. So, like I had said before, when you import a data set, you need to look and make sure that it's imported each column correctly. We've got a junk column, order. This is a character column. Even though when we look at it, it's meant to be mostly numbers, mostly integers. Um, why is it imported as a character column? That's because one item in this column is a character type. And therefore, because you can't mix um, different character types in the same column, all the numbers in that column had to be turned into characters. Okay, we can also see your score. This is a double, this is a numeric type, and that's correct. Letter is a character type, that's good. Good is also a character type. And this looks like it's meant to be true false values, but they're recorded every possible way you could record a true or false value the words true or false, the numbers one and zero, and the letters T and F. Um, hopefully your data aren't that messy, but I've seen data sets that are worse. Okay, we've got min max here. So we've got two different integers separated by a dash in the same column. We'll learn in the tidy R chapter, how do we fix columns like that? How do we make our data set um, tidy so that there's only one piece of information in each column, not two, but we won't go over that today. And date is also a character and columns can have a date type. So let's learn how to tell read CSV what kind of columns are we expecting here. Okay. So the way that we do this is with another argument to read CSV called cal types. Um, here we are, cal types. Now that's going to be a list. It's a list of the columns that you want to specify and what their type is. So we're going to create the list first and just call it CT. Remember you can create a list with a function called list. Now each list item needs to have a name that matches one of the column names and then you need to tell it what type. How do we know what, how to tell it what type? We can look in the help function. Um, we can look at the cows, the cows function, and that this will give us um, the different column types. So here it tells you you can use um, a function called cal underscore logical or the letter L to say that a column is a logical type. 
Cal underscore integer or the letter I to say it's an integer type. D for double, character for characters or everything else. Um, and we could use a capital D for dates. So let's see, let's try this here. Well, we can also use um, an underscore or a dash to skip a column. So let's just get rid of that junk column. So junk equals dash, which means skip it. Order. Order was meant to be an integer column. Uh, score is fine. Letter was fine. Good was meant to be a logical column, true or false values. And date is a character column. Um, so it's meant to be a date column. So let's tell it capital D for date. So then we set cal types equal to the CT list. Anything that we don't specify, read CSV, we'll try to guess. It'll look at the first 1,000 rows and guess from that what's the data type from there. So we define CT and re-import mess. Now, we've got 10 parsing failures. So order is meant to be is an integer. Now, again, we need to read these, not just look at it, say, oh no, there was an error, I don't know what to do. But our 10 parsing failures, mostly they're dates. We'll take care of that in a minute. And here's one where in row two, the column order was expected to be an integer, but it was actually the word missing. So we can see that instead of NA or leaving it blank, somebody wrote the word missing in. Now you can set another argument to read CSV um, as NA. So you can tell it what kind of values did we use to mean no value is available here. Um, so not available is the word missing will also mean not available. So if we run that, we get rid of that warning. Um, now we could have just left it because that warning would just create NAs anyways, but it's good to try to get rid of the warnings or to understand why you have warnings. Now we've got um, nine parsing failures. They expected something that looked like a date, but what it actually got was this. So we can use the cal date function here where we tell it explicitly what's the format. Um, so the format of our dates and we can is percent %y that means the four digit year percent %m dash percent %d so if you don't tell it the format explicitly it'll guess that it uses the most common date format for your localization whatever country your computer is set in if it uses a different kind of format then you probably need to tell it specifically so let's redefine that rerun mess and we get no more parsing errors. Now let's have a look at mess. It's converted our dates to have two digit days even if they um, are one through nine. So this word missing has been changed to NA. We've gotten rid of the junk column. Good is now an entirely logical column. Everything's been converted to true or false instead of 0, 1, T, or F. Um, and we'll learn later how to fix this min-max column.